this incident, this was purely a countless bill. It was a, a failure of an industry to maintain good practices and to prevent the spills from moving off site. And then once that spill moved off site, the contaminated water was distributed to 300,000 people. It's unprecedented and no disaster of this scale for chemical drinking water contamination where a do not use order has been issued to 300,000 people has ever happened in the United States and the national security implications of it. West Virginia seems to be, uh, it's important to West Virginia, but it doesn't seem to have raised to the significance that it should for national security implications of the nation. This weekend, uh, we've just completed a public meeting and seminar series for the people of West Virginia to understand the results of what we call the WVTAP project. Um, so we briefed the public on all the results. This weekend, an international panel of toxicologists and health risk assessment experts are flying in from all over the world, and they're going to evaluate the safety of the drinking water for this area. So, the underfunded work that my students and I and Kevin White did while we were here, uh, we did it simply going in with one mission. Once we hit the ground, realizing that our mission had to change to more of a humanitarian education approach, and helping homeowners understand what's going on, as well as taking water samples. Um, we did the flushing video, and we were able to, to help people prevent themselves from being chemically exposed. Um, and then several of the press conferences that were coming out by the governor's office, the statements coming out by certain organizations, the, the information that was coming out was not what was needed to help the people on the ground, the people that were living in. Uh, and that was very frustrating to me. When we went into these homes, we met these homeowners, they were in shock. I mean, that this was happening and then they didn't know what to do. So we we, we spent more time, we, we interviewed them for about 30, 40 minutes, talked to them uh, to try to see if we could connect the dots in terms of all the homeowners that we were talking to. After that, we looked at their plumbing systems to try to figure out where the contaminated water was, where their odor problems were, and uh, then we help them flush it. And in some houses, you know, people asked us, should our kids stay around? And I said, no. But, you know, we, we didn't have any scientific evidence to, to say that. You know, there was no data. There was no data. Nobody had ever flushed contaminated water plumbing system on the scale before. Crude MCHM had never contaminated a drinking water system ever and on the scale before. So you're not applying direct science anymore. You're applying, well, based on what I know of science, this is what I would recommend. So that was, that was really, uh, really challenging to make decisions because as a scientist, you want to say, well, the data says this, therefore do this. But there was no data, there was no information. So you, you have to just, you know, make recommendations to, to protect people. And hey, if they're over, if they're, if they're too conservative, you know, it's just more work. But if they're not conservative enough, then people can get exposed. The, the, the order to flush, is, I, I think that was the right thing to do. If that had to happen, I mean, it was, there was no other way. Um, nobody had thought about this before. And now, what they should have recognized is chemical volatilization and inhalation issues associated with flushing hot water from the plumbing system. Uh, and, and you and I talked about this earlier, which is why we developed that video. Because that's basic science, understanding that if you, if you have hot water, chemicals will evaporate from faster than cold water. So if you're trying to minimize chemical exposure, you only want to flush cold water. Once the reports of uh, medical issues start coming out, when people start flushing their plumbing systems, I think it was a mistake not to, to, to acknowledge that that was happening. Uh, but again, this entire incident has been unprecedented. So you had people that were not trained in this type of incident all responding with their different perspectives on it, which, you know, made the response very, very complicated. I had uh, approached the governor's office uh, after a press conference and explained to them the severity of the situation that was happening on the ground. Uh, and they were, uh, it was news, it was news to them. Uh, 
some of the agencies said the issues, it's not really a big deal there. They've already figured it out. The response is over. Um, so they, they didn't really comprehend the gravity of the situation. When I went back to Alabama and the, I thought it was over. Uh, I received a call from the governor's office on a Thursday and I was asked uh, if I would be available Friday um, to, to discuss possible possible ways to, to help the state of West Virginia. Um, I was a little in shock because I was pretty critical of them. I said, yeah, sure. I mean, that's what this is about, is helping people. And so for, for a good day, we listed all the questions that the public was demanding to be answered. So we, we kind of honed it down to a couple questions. What are the chemical levels in people's homes and are they above the the health limit that was set by CDC and DHHR. Then we realized that the issue was nobody believed the 10 part per billion screening level. So we said, well, that, that's not a question. So well, how would we answer that? We have to bring in experts to basically redo the screening level. And about Saturday night, uh, about 8 o'clock at night, we're all in the meeting. We've been there for 12 hours. Uh, talking about this, DHHR, Bureau of Public Health, and the Governor's Office say, can you put this together in a, in, into a budget? And Jeff and I looked at each other and were like, you know, if you want somebody to do this, that's fine. You should have them do the budget, but we just came here to kind of help you out. And they said, no, we, we were considering hiring you to do it. And Jeff and I looked at each other because this was not in the cards. I mean, we didn't think about that. So, so we said, okay, we'll go back and we'll kind of budget it out. We went back to the hotel room. We're sitting in the hotel room. It's 11.30 at night. And we both have those, those hotel uh, pads of paper. And we're writing out the budget for three quarters of a million dollar project. We're sitting here writing it out on, on hotel paper. We're calling people. We're calling Dr. Mike McGuire at UCLA. We're calling uh, all sorts of people just to see if this can happen. And uh, next day, we go in and we pitched, you know, this is what it's going to take. This is how you can do it. Before we finished, we said, be aware that if you don't do it our way, we're not doing it at all. And you will not be telling us what to do. You know, we're happy to answer any questions you have, but we don't really, you know, care about the political ramifications of what we're doing because we're going to do science. So, uh, so that's kind of like what happened. It was, it was tremendous. They decided to, to, to select us. And so that afternoon, I met with uh, the governor. That was a very special meeting. He mentioned that he was thankful that we were here. Um, something that, that kind of took me by surprise. He asked me blunt questions. You know, is there anything I need to worry about from this? And I said, yes. And I'm straight. Hold on. He asked me about the, the health effects panel. What if they come back with the lower screening level? Then they come back with the lower screening level and the ramifications of that will be significant. So he was actually very, um, very moved by how much his administration tried to do the right thing. And the whole time, I could see it in his eyes, that he, he knew that everything his administration did, they believed was the best thing to do. And I believed them because there was no blueprint for this. So I, I told the governor that you know this it's not it's not his fault for the response. It's to my knowledge it's it's the, the federal government dropped the ball. Because the federal government's supposed to help the states prepare for national disasters. And that, that did not happen here. So um, I told him that West Virginia will be most seasoned drinking water contamination experts for the future. So if any drinking water contamination incident happens, California, Massachusetts, Florida, they're going to call the state of West Virginia and say, what do we need to do? What do we not need to do? And I think that's important.